All week long here on the Weather Channel, we're highlighting the growing risk to our nation's cities from sea level rise. Now today, we are looking at how hazardous materials could impact coastal cities and rising water. An 85-mile stretch of the Mississippi River between Baton Rouge and New Orleans is referred to as the Chemical Corridor. The corridor is home to over 100 petroleum refineries and chemical production factories. Now, roughly a quarter of America's petrochemicals are processed here. Okay, Houston is the largest petrochemical manufacturing area in the world. The city is also home to more than 3,000 energy related establishments, including many of the top oil and gas exploration and production firms and petroleum pipeline operations. Now we go to the Northeast and talk about Philadelphia, home to the largest oil refinery on the East Coast. Philadelphia Energy Solutions processes over 300,000 barrels a day and is the 10th largest refinery in the U.S. Take a look at Philadelphia with a projected sea level rise of eight feet. Approximately 70 hazardous waste sites would be at risk with this type of rising water. Joining us now to talk about the impacts of the hazardous material could have on these areas is retired U.S. Army Lieutenant General Russell Honoré. Thank you so much for being with us uh, this morning, General. Always a pleasure to talk to you. What would be the impacts from um, an inundated waste treatment facility or chemical plant in the Houston and Galveston area? Well, what we end up with is collateral damage because, uh, as you can see from a couple of shots I sent you, uh, the, the plants themselves become inundated with water. Uh, then their storage capacity to hold toxins that they use in their process, that spreads all over the local area. And it really turned out to be uh, what we might describe a toxic mess. Mm -hmm. We saw that during Hurricane Isaac in, in 2012, you recall, down in Plankton Parish. It was only a Category 1, uh, uh, Stephanie, but it created havoc inside those plants because it could not pump the water out uh, at the rate it came in, and it caused many of the containers to spill over. The other problem we have, Steph, is along the coast is a whole network of pipelines. Those pipelines are now exposed. Some of them some subsidence in the wetlands because you know we are losing our wetlands as a, as a result of climate change and the result right. of pollution. And as those pipelines get exposed, uh, they become vulnerable to uh, the boats running into them mm -hmm. and high uh, winds will come in and break them. Okay, so, you know, Katrina could have been a disaster for this area. Have they learned from the past hurricanes and have they started taking any sort of preparations or even making any sort of plans for the future? Well, we have uh, created a, a master plan to uh, fix the uh, wetlands in and around Louisiana because the wetlands give us protection. That is billed at about $50 billion, Stephanie, and I think it's about only about 50% of what we really need. This is a, a national security problem for our nation because of the amount of exposure it gives to the oil and gas that we need to run the country, yeah. and that infrastructure is very vulnerable. You know, uh, General, we only have about 30 seconds here. I wanted to ask you about Philadelphia. You know, this is a, you know, coastal city. You know, a lot of people don't think of it as that. What hazards here? We're talking about two feet rise in water by 2060. What are the impacts there? You're talking about the worst case scenario, Steph, would be uh, a high tide level surge water coming in from a heavy storm or a northeaster uh, surge water being pressed into that city, it would be a total mess because it's going to spread the toxins that are in those containers.